I knew going into this week it was going to be a crazy week, right? But the craziness, the madness, uh, I think it actually exceeded my expectations this week, which keeps happening in 2022, go figure. So we had uh, midterm elections. We still don't know who's going to actually control the Senate, and we probably know that the Republicans are going to control the House. And during all the excitement of the midterm elections, another thing was kind of unfolding. The second biggest cryptocurrency exchange was basically starting to go insolvent, and this was spreading all over the place right as the midterms are going on. So you got cryptocurrency literally is crashing right now as I'm making this video. And on top of all of this, what might even be the kicker for this week is we have inflation coming out. What ends up happening with the CPI or the inflation print is gonna, I don't know, it's gonna really, it could rock markets. It could send them higher. I don't know what's gonna happen today. We're gonna have to see. Uh, but this day today when I'm going to be releasing this video is when CPI is going to be coming out. So let's talk about what people are expecting right now and if it's over or under it, maybe it'll help with what the reaction is to the market. And we're going to talk about what the reaction might be and where we kind of sit right now based on inflation. And uh, because and remember, we need to understand what happens with inflation because the Federal Reserve is really keeping a very close eye on what's going on with CPI or inflation. So if inflation keeps going higher and higher and higher, the Federal Reserve is not going to end up stopping their increase of interest rates probably anytime soon, right? It's very a very, very important part of why they are increasing interest rates right now. So take a look at this. We have November 10th um, is when we're going to get October's inflation data. So we're going to see what inflation was year over year from October of 2021 till October of 2022. So we're gonna get that. Uh, this is going to be, I live abroad. So this is gonna be, I think, um, I believe 9.30 in the morning on Thursday. So uh, I think that, don't pay attention to this, I think it's resetting it to my current time. So we have a forecast of 8% of just general CPI. So inflation is supposed to be 8%. That's what's being forecasted. The previous inflation print was 8.2%, as you can see here. So they're forecasting it to be lower, right? A slightly, slightly less than it was the month previous. And what we can see here is just how high and how fast the inflation has been just shooting up and why the Federal Reserve is really trying to combat what's going on here. So it's not that necessarily it's higher than 6% because, you know, there have been time periods back in the 90s where it's it's been this high. It's really how fast this happened is part of it. And yeah, of course it is how high it is too because they want their target uh, inflation rate is 2% for the Fed. So the Fed wants to, it to come down. So, okay, we had very low inflation for a very long time and boom, it shoots up. And this is the, the thing that the Fed is trying to do. They want price stability. And so next up, we have core inflation. So core inflation is when you take out things like energy and you take out things like food to see maybe a more smooth number. And as you can see, it's more smooth, right? The other number it had some negative years of inflation. This doesn't have any negative years um, because energy and food prices are in this number. So what are we looking at for core? Because core is also a very important component of this. So in core inflation, we have a 6.5% forecast and it was 6.6% before. So again, if core is continuing to still go up, and even if the general real inflation CPI goes down, core may even still be a thing that the market cares more about because they may care more about what's happening with core inflation because it's harder to get maybe core inflation out of the system than it is if just, let's say, energy prices go down. Um, that might be an easier thing because energy prices are more volatile, right? So in terms of CPI estimates for different places, we have Credit Suisse is the, the lowest uh, at 7.8%. Barclays 7.8, Bank of America 7.8, Goldman 7.8, Nomura, JP Morgan. So we got all these things. We go all the way up to Scotia Bank at the highest at 8.1. So no one thinks that inflation is going to be higher than 8.1%. So if there's an 8.2%, that's going to be a very big shock probably to the market and not going to be very good, at least for the time being uh, tomorrow or today, let's say. Now, this is an interesting tweet from Michael J. Kramer. He says, October CPI could be significantly hotter than expected. Analyst estimates are for a year-over-year -year October CPI of 7.9% and Cleveland Fed estimates year-over-year -year of CPI 8.1. CPI has come in at hotter than the Cleveland Fed's estimates 16 of the last 19 times. And so if we look back here, we can see the Cleveland Fed is the white line. And I think the actual is the uh, red line. So what it actually came in. And so you can see, the white line is under this red line, meaning that 
the Cleveland Fed has generally been off on inflation and they're basically on they're under it, right? And so it's actually surprising to the upside. And so um, maybe it's a possibility that it surprises again. I think that's just what I'm trying to show you here is that there's a probability that the Cleveland Fed has not had it right. They've been under the actual print. So maybe it's gonna be higher. I don't know what's gonna happen. Hey, we're gonna see that right now very shortly. Maybe while you're watching this video, it has just come out. So JP Morgan says if CPI comes in at 8.4% or higher, the S&P could fall 4.5 to 6%. This is from Market Rebellion. So again, if we have a, a surprise to the upside in inflation, that's not gonna be good for the market, especially over the short term. Um, this one's really interesting. So Carl Quintanilla tweeted this and he says, the rule of 20, stocks historically bottom when trailing PE and CPI was below 20. And so let's let's take a, a look at this chart because I really like this chart a lot. It's very interesting. So it says PE should be 12, it's 18 right now, or CPI should be two, and it's 8.2. So there's a disconnect is what this chart is going to be showing us. So there's something called the rule of 20. Stocks historically bottom when trailing PE plus the CPI was below 20. So for example, if you took the 8.2% inflation year over year and you add it to the PE ratio, you're gonna get a much higher than 20 number, right? So before, let's say it was 18 and then you had 2% inflation, which it was for a while, right? Well, that was 20 and it could have been essentially a market bottom. But what this is saying is right now, when we look over here, we're nowhere near a market bottom because the rule of 20 does not apply right now. So when you look at these blue lines over here, this blue line, for example, this is a market bottom and you can see it's below 20, market bottom below 20, market bottom below 20, right? So all these blue lines, it's below 20 or essentially at 20, let's say maybe in, in 1941, it was about at 20. So just an interesting you know, historical context to put into here with what's going on inside the market and maybe the fact that we're nowhere actually near what we need to be at to have an actual market bottom. Let's take a look at where the market is right now so you can visually see it. So we're looking at the S&P 500 and I did want to actually show you that the S&P 500, after all the madness so far this week, is actually only down 0.91%. So not so bad of a week actually, considering we don't even know who's technically gonna be in control of, let's say, the US government. The, the, of course, inflation is gonna be a huge one for this. So where are we right now though? So if we're looking at like a kind of longer term chart just to see it like if we are at a market bottom and sorry, I, I, these arrows are on here from a previous video, but let's zoom in. We can see that this is down, this is the pandemic low, okay? Pandemic low over here. Let's zoom in and see where we are, okay? The question is, was this a market bottom? This little, this little uh, candle right here, was this a market bottom? Let's call this 3,512. Where are we right now? Well, let's go back to what Carl Quintanilla tweeted. And so remember what he's saying here is that PE should be 12 and it's 18, okay? So how do we figure out like, where are we right now? Where, where we, should we be? Well, there's kind of a way that we could do this. Let's, this is gonna be like a napkin math. Don't, don't take my word for this because I'm not gonna go and find the actual PE ratio of the uh, S&P 500 right now. But what I'm gonna do is just gonna say, what generally might this be, okay? So let's take a look at where we are. And so let's say this uh, red line here, it represents where the market closed and it's uh, 7, 3,750, okay? We're at 3,750 and let's say we're at an 18 PE ratio. So that's actually gonna put earnings at 208, okay? So that would be the earnings. Let's just write that in here. 208 are earnings of the S&P 500 and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change the PE ratio, right? We're gonna say, okay, what if earnings are actually 12? So what's 208 times 12? And so that's 2,500. And I should say, unfortunately, that's 2,500. So if this was the, the real case, if this rule of 20 thing really is supposed to always happen, um, that would mean that, well, we first off, we had to zoom out of the chart to get a longer time frame so we could actually see where 2,500 even is. So we're looking at way down here. It's not quite the pandemic low. That, that's a good sign but it is very far down. So how far down is this? So it's only about like 33%. Okay, 33%, 33% down. Uh, I hope this doesn't happen to people. Uh, well, who knows, who knows, it could happen. I've, I've had so many videos on this channel that have talked about where general recessionary time periods end up being and what happens. And we probably should honestly be lower right now 
Not meaning that it's not a good time to invest because I always do like investing for the long term and think that it's always good to you know, stay invested in the market. But uh, it wouldn't 100% surprise me if we definitely were down a lot further, let's say that. I don't love the idea of this, so let me give you another some positive things on the other side of this. I showed this in my previous video, so I think this is a good thing to kind of uh, help us on a, a optimistic note, because you know I always try to end these videos on an optimistic note. Um, I think that probably uh, if you look at this, you're going to be more, uh, you're going to be happier, right? You're going to be happier. So this is a chart that I showed actually in my last video, and I just want to like reiterate this to help us with um, some positivity, you know, just so we're not too dire. In this case, this is showing us uh, returns during election years and during midterm elections. And what happens after midterm elections? Well, generally, you are up 18.6% a year later. So even if we do end up dropping 30%, Generally speaking, you're usually going to be up a year later after a midterm election. Now, if you look over here, you could see that this is also uh, showing different time periods. So six months forward, you're up 16% on average. 12 months forward, you're up 18.6%. 24 months later, you're up 33.7%. So, okay, maybe the market does fall quite a bit. But, you know, generally speaking, after midterms, historically, it's almost always going to be better or up about a year later. So, this is the kind of presidential cycle thing that they talk about. Anyway, all I know, it's gonna be a very crazy week. It's gonna be a crazy end of the year. There's no doubt about that. And I don't know where things are gonna end up. I just know, long term, I like to buy. I like to keep buying into the stock market and I don't wanna regret not investing. I don't think I regret investing. I regret not investing. And so I just keep investing. Now, mind you, I have a lot of time on my hands because I'm a pretty young guy. Not too young, but I'm pretty young still, and I have a lot of time. I have a long runway. So for me, I'm totally good still. I hope you like this. Hit the like button, subscribe, and got a disclaimer here. See you next time.